Alexander from myself and Abdul Miskin, Jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam as Shaykh al-Mursaleen, Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa Alhamdulillah Allah granted us to enter into the last 10 days of Ramadan at Qumina nar is a freedom from fire. And what we just recited uh, for Imam Ali salam and this symbolic shahadat of Imam Ali salam that is at the gate of Etkum min al nar that in Allah's way there is no coincidence. Everything has an immense reality that we're entering into the, the gates of freedom from fire. And in the nasheeds they recite that even you have a, a thousand skins you won't be safe from fire. And if you have one skin and that skin is with Sayyidina Imam and Ali salam, means that you have the love of Prophet love of Ahlul Bayt, love of holy companions because this is the way of Imam Ali salam, the immense the master of, of adab and manners. His love for his brotherhood and fellowship salam, and what he gave us of manners and futuwa that many may claim to love, even there are countries established pretending to have that love and the way of Imam Ali salam is futuwa, the way of knighthood and chivalry of good character. And what Prophet gave of his zulfiqar was given to Prophet because it represents La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah So those who tuning in knew they can check what the shaykh is talking about is that the Zulfiqar and the famous sort of double-edged sword of Imam Ali Salam is actually Lam Alif with the Lam and the Alif and at the tip is the symbol of that and at the base is the who and this is a sword that Allah gave to Sayyidina Muhammad and that Prophet conveyed that reality and that sword to Imam Ali that, you are the keeper of the door. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And the ulul bab, the, the people of the door whom they betrayed as the gatekeepers of that reality. It's, it's a category of the rijal that throughout Qur'an and throughout these nine months inshaAllah we've been teaching that there are many categories of people. There are those whom believe and they accepted Islam. There's ulama qaim al bilqist, there's ulul bab, the companions of the, of the gate, the door, the door to all realities. Ahli tafakkur, when which Allah gave them very high status, which none know it but these people. So these are an elite category of souls whom they train to reach these types of contemplation and realities. And 12,000 rijal in the image in the ruhaniyat of Imam Ali salam are in a continuous training that although they wish to extinguish that light and to, to martyr and to 
to harm Imam Ali Salam that they stabbed and the whole story of the shahadat is that uh, he was in contemplation, he was in the difficulty, they thought that he was passing salam after being stabbed in the masjid while praying and Imam Ali Salam asked that uh, put me onto my camel and send my camel to the desert and they thought that he wants to pass away in the desert and so they put him on the camel and told the desert to go, uh, to the camel to go. The camel started to ride out and a caravan that was coming in to the town, they asked it, did you see the body that we had, uh, Imam Ali Salam had been martyred and we loaded his body and sort of on his last breath he was going out into the desert. So no we didn't see that, we saw Imam Ali riding and waving at us and going into the desert. So from the knowledge of awliyaullah and there's no body, there's, there's a mazhar in which they have seen his spiritual being and they have associated those spiritual locations to have a strong influence from Imam Ali Salam. And alhamdulillah as we recite now the Ali and all these nasheeds, these are the tales of this reality that Allah has kept Imam Ali Salam in his physicality as a great guardian of Islam so that his family way won't be extinguished and that the nation, nation's way will be upheld, the way of the companions, the way of Islam, the way of Ahlul Bayt, all safeguarded in that reality. And from Jabal Qaf his ruhaniyat is in a training of 12,000 descendants whom will have the shaykh and will be dressed with the ruhaniyat of Imam Ali Salam and trained in his knowledges and in his qudra and his power. And these are 12,000 that will ride in the time of Imam Mahdi Salam. So means we pray that Allah make us of those. And I would imagine the sign of those are those whom have a immense love for Imam Ali Salam. And they train in the way of uh, futuwa, in the way of chivalry, not by nation countries that have a claim and those claims were probably taught to them by Western and British influence to separate the nation and confuse the nation. It's not that, this is not the way of futuwa, those are political systems that think they follow Imam Ali Salam. And this has nothing to do with politics. These individuals just like the nation of our own Islam that we keep teaching, everything has its own signs. These beings whom have been trained in this reality, they are custodians of knowledge and manners and that they have a deep love for the love of Prophet and Imam Ali Salam. And that they are inheritors of ulul ahlbab, the keepers of the gate and this is the gate of realities. So many of them of the outside people you say, well that's not those people. No, so that's why these knowledges will separate us from who claims they're with Imam Ali Salam, what political systems think they're with Imam Ali Salam. These are individuals whom have been trained with chivalry good manners, good care, they must have the love of Prophet and that which Prophet loved which was his holy companions. Must have the love of Qur'an, the holy companions and the love and the respect of all creation, the best of manners that they keep the, the way of, of khuluq and the best of character. And that's the sign of these individuals. And that the knowledge they have of realities because knowledge is power, it's the knowledge that set, sets one free. In dunya they like to call themselves illuminated and they keep a knowledge thinking everybody else will be enslaved by their ignorance. But heavenly knowledge is a knowledge that has an immense angelic power because it's a sign of immense energies that dress the soul. It's byproduct or Divinely knowledges and the angelic reality that flows from them. 
The secret of the Zulfiqar is the Lam Alif and the secret of Lam Alif is the reality of La ilaha illallah wa Muhammadun Rasulullah The La ilaha illallah is never going to be known by anyone, nobody is going to enter into that ocean without the other reality and the shadow of that reality known as Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's what is the responsibility of the gatekeepers is that come to this ocean, come to this way of reality. But that Zulfiqar must take the head off of the servant that this way and this door that you're asking to enter of realities it's not allowed to use your head. So they're not the people of the head. Now here come these are the signs of this isharat. So people say, okay are we from that, are we from this, or are we from that or the other one says, no we are from that. So the criteria to enter this gate was no head. So then what's the first zikr of all tariqahs because the turuqs are the way that we're supposed to train people to possibly be enrolled into that door and into that oceans of knowledge and send the secret of knowledges, the city of all realities. So the first zikr that was supposed to be taught was, La ilaha illallah, La to your head, illaha and illallah, no divinity but Allah So it means if somebody is not taught with La ilaha illallah they can't be from that reality, they can't even be near that reality. So that, that's the, the sign of entering towards that gate that Allah if He wanted and wrote for them a destiny to be from this reality to be the companions of the shaykhs of the gate, not all of them are, they don't even teach that understanding. But to meet with one of these ulul albab and that their responsibility is to train you in cut your head and that la has to be on your head, that this is not a way of what you think you know and that your way of logic and continuously putting your logic towards marifah, your logic towards understanding and knowledges, that they were supposed to be trained in La ilaha illallah in which they began to negate their head and what their head thinks it understands and then they became the people of the heart. Because illallah, illallahu, illallahu and these are all then the other zikrs that are all being initiated for the servants. That we're not a, a people whom when you enter or come to enter that you're going to use your head. You're going to negate the head and understand that your nafs works with your head and your whole beginning process is to cut your head. Turn off your head, turn off your understanding, don't watch videos that are not relevant to you, don't read books that are not relevant to you and your path. Means that at every point shaitan is trying to contaminate the head. They try to give every type of false narrative, everything to create a shak and a doubt in the way, in the way of Prophet in the Holy Qur'an and everything. Shaitan's every purpose of shaitan is to go after your head, create a doubt within your head, make you to use your head. And what the kalima says, la. So the servants of this reality, the first interaction with this sword is that this sword hits their head and begins to teach them the la on your head, la that don't use it, negate it, turn the power of your head off. And then Mawlana Shaykh would say, these are no headed people instead of square headed. The ones he didn't like he would call them square headed people because the Wahhabis they are, everything is boxed, they can't think outside of that box. Everything is bidah, is haram, is shirk, is, is kufr. 
and said, oh, these square-headed people, because <clears throat> never dislike for people, he's supposed to be the saviour of people. But when you're square-headed and you can't think out of that box, your head became your trap. It's like a mouse trap. Allah gave us a head but wanted us not to use it. Then later people will come and say, oh it's Jehu Adan, oh we heard the first thing Allah created was aqal. I said, well then go to the talks on aqal and what really aqal stands for. So gave us a head in which the nafs works with. And the people of Marifa will be trained because the biggest battle is between the head and their heart and who's winning. If your head is winning, your heart has been damaged. If your heart is winning, you're reaching to realities. So our whole life struggle is between head and heart. Every sobat that comes and every training that comes, every marifa that begins to open within the heart is to open the heart. But shaitan will cast something into the head to bring a doubt and to take away that reality. And that's why then the students of this way they must be trained in the, in the people of zikr and the first zikr of every tariqah is La ilaha illallah. Why? Because you're cleansing them that come with us, we want to take all through the gate but not many will reach that reality. Many will be lost with their head because when it came time to really cut your head and really cut this faculty of overthinking and analyzing, they will lose themselves with that thought process and shaitan will take them and they will run. So then this immense ocean of reality is the reality of the heart of La ilaha illallah can only be reached in the way of the heart. And that's why then these 12 months of journeying is the reality of this entrance into the cave of who? That even Nabi Musa wanted and said, I won't stop where the two rivers meet, means he wanted the realities of the Zulfiqar. He wanted any time we see the symbol of that Zulfiqar is the symbol of this reality. That this Zulfiqar represents the people whom Allah gave them to hold La ilaha illallah wa Muhammadun Rasulullah Means every Prophet of Allah wanted that reality. And that's why Prophet described that my ulama, my awliya, they are the inheritors of the prophecies of Bani Israel because you see in the Qur'an that Sayyidina Musa wanted that. I want where these two rivers meet, means I want to reach to the who, I want to understand La ilaha illallah and how it reflects to the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah and I want to be a custodian of that who are the who. That their hidayat and their guidance is based on wow. So the who men are the people of guidance and Divinely love. That's why they're based on khuluq, their character is to be loving, their character is to be merciful, their character is to be accepting, their character is to save people from Jahannam and not cast people into Jahannam. All of these what we call isharat and signs. So who are the signs of the people who will be safe in the last days? Well they must have the key of Muhammadun Rasulullah Then who are the people whom are the 12,000 inheritors of the way of Imam Ali Salaam? Well then they must have the immense understanding of La ilaha illallah and the secret of that the Zulfiqar. And they must be trained in that reality. And this whole way of futuwa and chivalry is to make them who men, the people of the who, means the rijal of who in which they're trained in how to open their heart, they're trained on how to contemplate. If you can't, if you, if you can't break down the information coming into your head means that you have to be from the people of tafakkur. Otherwise how you can break down what's coming to you? If you don't sit and contemplate 
You have to be a person which continuously take knowledges and stops it from rising to your head. If you don't contemplate everything is in your head, hundred percent of everything you heard went to your head. Only the people of tafakkur stop it from going to their head because they sit and absorb realities. When they sit in the association of realities, this is what we talked on last talk, means they have such a, a, a admiration for realities. They know that they are, as soon as that fountain opens they're taking the kawthar. Can you imagine that you come to the kawthar and you take it and throw it this way on the floor, then you take it and throw it this way on the floor, Allah will stop that kawthar from ever touching you. They say even the saliva of Prophet was holy to them. This is the love the companions had. The love for awliya is that their knowledges are kawthari, that take it, don't let it hit to the floor, don't let it be something that was wasted and you didn't hear it, you didn't act on it, you didn't absorb it but that you documented it and that that kawthar dresses you and blesses you. As a result of everything you hear from them, they don't ever let it go to the head and they keep it within their heart that that's a haqqaiq and my life is to keep everything within my heart and don't leave it for my, my head. For who lies and resides within the head of humanity? Shaitan. Shaitan and the nafs they are in control of the head. <clears throat> Qalb al mu'min baytullah. So then who resides within baytullah? Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. So those whom we love they reside within the heart. The knowledges of the heart belong within the heart. Shaitan wants to take these knowledges into the head. And then begin to analyze with your nafs and negate, no can't be, no, no it wasn't like that. Now watch the outside, exactly what they do. Most masjids they won't celebrate these holy days because there's always some controversy or not everybody understands and whatever people are doing because they became zahiri and external and everything is based on their head, their logic and some sort of a board of businessmen. And we have to present it to the board means that their way becomes lost. This way of marifa is the immense love that resides within the heart. They take the knowledges within the heart, they meditate within these knowledges and ask Allah to make it to become real. And that becomes their greatest struggle and that's why Prophet gave Imam Ali the sword. So that all the outside beasts that you have slain and all the outside criminals that you have slain, the greatest fight is the internal and here's the Zulfiqar for the internal battle. So means that those whom inherit that fight they're in a continuous battle of La ilaha illallah and that their reality is to enter their heart and not to go to their head, not to use their head. We described before even with the advent of Imam Mahdi salam, if anyone puts a time to eschatology, the study of the last days, anyone who puts a time already lost his faith in this way of marifa. So external shaykhs and imams and teachers they say, oh no, no, before Imam Mahdi it's like maybe 150 years. As soon as you made an eternal event and brought it to a time you already lost this understanding. So we described that. Because it's an eternal event that you're waiting for, not the physical. We're not sitting here and they call it a death cult. 
that these people whom are, are looking for everything to be destroyed and collapsed and people to be killed so that they can see their Saviour. But they have it room. The whole reality was you were not supposed to put a time. Prophet was teaching his companions, it's now. Dajjal is here, Dajjal is coming. That the Sahabi's yaqeen was so powerful that they thought it was there, that behind every bush they thought it was the Dajjal. Why? They didn't think because they actually began to see. Because they are the masters of yaqeen as Prophet was giving of his holy breath, they were intaking and believing. As a result Allah took an unseen event and made it to be seen for them, took a, a timed event and made it to be eternal for them. So that when that event is going to happen in the world of light it's always happening and they could see the movements of Dajjal. When they look with their eternal eye and the eye of their heart they could see it and as a result it perfected their faith. So these are again these are the how the shaykhs teach their students what we call isharat that anytime you hear a scholar or imam putting a time on a timeless event they, they lost the understanding and it means nothing to them. Now they're just uh, archaeology students waiting to, to look for something and to dig up something. But this way of marifa is that we have nothing to do with the time. You have to believe it's now, you have to believe the events are happening now, you have to store and stock up on your supplies now, you have to take it every instant the shaykh teaches something, you take it and act upon it. And when you've acted upon it whatever the shaykh is teaching becomes true for you and each from your left to your right will be different in their belief. No two people believe the same. The person next to you, you can't imagine what he sees or hears. He said, but I've been sitting in the same room, has nothing to do with it. Each one has their own belief, each one acts upon their belief and as a result Allah describes they hear what no people have heard before, they can see what no people have seen before and Allah's rich means what He gives to hear for a servant, no two servants will hear the same. What he gives to see for the servant, no two servants will see the same horizon. And that's when we describe that when the servant becomes of an eternal reality, they walk on the street with their physical eyes they can see the traffic and the buildings, with their spiritual eyes they can see which buildings Allah has already destroyed. So everything for this reality is based on eternity. Means then we pray that Allah grant us to be from the people of the Zulfiqar and that our way of love and muhabbat and reverence for Prophet the holy companions, Ahlul Bayt and specifically the love for Imam Ali Salam as a safeguard in the last days as the one whom his descendants will come to the earth which is Imam Mahdi Salam that we have a, a, a love for them and that we've asked Allah to make us to be halal for them, to be purified for them and that to give us the khuluq and the character to be amongst them and with them for eternity. And that if we believe and our actions are based on belief then Allah open for us to see them at every moment, to keep their companionship at every moment and to be dressed from their nazar and their grace. And that that nazar and that blessing be upon ourselves, our family and our communities. And we pray that Allah dress us and bless us on these holy nights, the Qadr nights, that this gate of Ed Kumin nar is with the Zulfiqar. And that it just so happens those are the gates of power now opening from the soul and which has immense qudra, immense power to keep the companionship of these holy souls. So that to reach to these oceans of power, not because of ourself but because of whom we love. And that Prophet sends promises, you be with whom you love. If you love the right people you should be very happy in life. If you love the wrong people 
you'll be in the wrong place. So Allah gives us all these signs that as soon as we're entering into the 20th day and 21st day, is comes now the love of Sayyidina Imam and Ali Salam and that, that Zulfiqar to reach to us and to grant us access into these days of power and to be dressed from Allah's ni'mat and the completion of His ni'mat to be upon our souls. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.